This is where we hold them. This is where we fight. Now listening to Sweep the Rack podcast featuring Brooklyn Rob and Big Mike. Rob, what's good, homie? Mike, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my hat and I'm putting it backwards because tonight is going to be one of those nights, Mike. One of those nights. The gloves are coming off tonight. Rob, for those of you who aren't informed, Rob's heated because people are people are all over him for his take on Twitter uh, today, earlier today. Or was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? No, it was after the first block of qualifying. When oh, I okay. So it was a couple days ago. Okay. All right. People are all over him for a take on Twitter he had a couple days ago. And Rob, Rob is out for vengeance tonight. Rob is out to you. You know the intro where he's throwing the spear. That's that's Rob's vibe, vibe tonight. Yeah, uh, we'll, get, we'll get into that later after our uh, I'm a quick league review here. But man, like it's amazing how like I I, I make one tweet and people just you know I, I I'm I'm all about like having a reasonable bowling discussion about why like my you know maybe tweet is is bad or not um but dude people they just are angry and bitter and just you know they just want to like fight you for some reason on the internet and it's kind of wild no come on people just listen everybody you know people have differing opinions and i think when somebody reads something that elicits a strong opinion from them they they you know feel feel a certain need to respond in some way. Uh, Robert Hamilton in the chat. What's up, Robert? Saying the gloves are coming off. Well, the the reason we'll talk about this later, but the reason the gloves are coming off is because Tom Clark uh, was on Bowl TV today saying that Rob wouldn't average 180 if he bowled the TOC. So, you know, that's that that that's part of the reason why Rob's heated. But we'll we'll get to that later. We got a few things to check in on here before we get to this conversation and some TOC talk. Uh, 17 man, 17 man step ladder this weekend shows Friday, two shows Saturday, and then another show Sunday, the final show Sunday. Uh, so, uh, Rob, we got, we, we got league review for the people. All right. We got league review. Uh, it's been, it's been two sparsely attended weeks in a row for my, uh, sports shot pot bowling league, uh, we only had 13 people this week. You know, we were getting upwards of 21, 23 for a few weeks. Kind of fell off. I, I Honestly, I don't really know what the reason is. Why this week, well, this week it was snowing on Tuesday. Okay, so, yeah, like I kind of felt like that had a little something to do with it. But we do have a pretty dedicated group of, like, 15 that are showing up every week to bowl. Uh, we bowled on the medium pattern. They, to me anyway, I don't, and listen, I'm not, I'm, I could be wrong, you know, I'm probably wrong 80% of the time when it comes to ideas I have in bowling. But uh, I actually thought that they the pattern was different. There was something different about it. Uh, like, usually on this pattern, I can start out with a with an asymmetric ball with some surface, and it looks really good. Could not do that. Gutter was not hooking at all. Uh, then on third game, I went to a pair where the right lane was just crazy tight down the lane. I struck, I, I hit the hole every time on the left lane. I don't think I ever hit the hole on the right lane. I crossed over once. Uh, I didn't bowl that great. My spare shooting was okay. Uh, but not great. Uh, I think I shot about 540 for the three. It was like one, 170 something, 190 something, 170 something again. Or maybe, yeah, or maybe it was, no, no, no. Maybe, yeah, that might have been it. Or it might have been 190, 170, 190. I forget what the combo was, but I was around 550. So give give or take 10 pins. So, um, 
yeah, I, I didn't bowl all that great. I feel like I'm I'm throwing it pretty good, but I was I was just really confused as to what was going on out there and and how, how to properly attack the lanes for what they were doing. It's it's weird, like you, when you bowl on a pattern repeated times in the same place, and you 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 develop these expectations about what it's going to do, mm-hmm. and then you go in one week and it doesn't do what you totally expect it to do. It just absolutely throws you off completely so um yeah but listen you know it, it's it's cool to show up and bowl i enjoy it you know they're tough they're challenging uh you know and, and that's what i enjoy about it so uh it's it's like a little little opportunity to get out there put some work in i gotta say i'm averaging about 196 i think right now uh so that's pretty good i mean i'm I, i'll be honest like i'm really happy with that if i if i finish this last uh, nine week set and and end up somewhere around 196. I feel like I have made major strides uh, in in where I was with the consistency uh, of my bowling on some of the some of the tougher uh, some of the tougher shots. Tim Sorrels in the chat, one of our one of our raffle winners last week. Uh, send the 20 bucks and we can send Tom Clark a worst of the week rosin bag. Oh my God. Dude, oh, that is too I good. It, Tim. That's, that's too good. Uh, so yeah, that's my league report. Nothing crazy. Uh, we had scores were kind of low scores were low. I think, I think, um, high series was, was, uh, six, six fifty, six sixty maybe. So scores were, scores were someone on the lower side. The left, the left was real nice. The left looked real good. The, we have two lefties that bowl with us, and both of them, and they they both bowled well, but they they scored very well. They both scored very well. I took note of that. Um, but yeah, listen, you know, another week. We got like uh, four weeks or five weeks left in this current set, and then uh, I don't know what we're gonna do. Some some people want to run a nine week set in the summer. Some don't. Uh, personally, this particular bowling alley, the approaches get really bad in the summer. So I sort of like shy away from running something there, but uh, yeah, you know, we'll we'll see, we'll see where it goes. How about you? I know you got a table at least. I saw on Twitter your boy again had to show up two hours early, but you got a table. Yo, the funny part of it is the team that we bowled against. I took a picture on Twitter, and they put two of those surfboard. Uh, I saw. Good for them. That's what you should do. That's what I said. Got. I'd bring my own table in if they're if they're not going to provide us with enough tables for people to sit and and have a place sit and put a drink down i'm gonna bring in my own six foot folding table and Mm -hmm. i'm gonna bring in four chairs and i'm gonna put the four chairs around the table and we're gonna put it right in the middle of the concourse and we're gonna sit right there and 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 if they say anything i'm gonna say well listen what do you expect me to do all of us are gonna stand around in random places for three hours while we bowl this league that's ridiculous the funny part about it is is that ever since we got the tables the last two weeks we, we can't win now I think my team is more focused on actually eating and drinking and stuff than they are actually bowling. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we have no problems with chairs. It's just the tables. But yeah, so we got a table. I love getting a table. I feel like I, I enjoy it so much more when we're just sitting around, you know, bullshitting and laughing, whatever, because it's, it's a 10 man team, right? So there's so much in between downtime, in between shots and whatnot. Um, but here's a quick funny story about league. So the TAT is running a regional tournament in our area, uh, April 8th and 9th. I believe it's at Ballero Mesa. Um, and uh, it's like five grand for first. There's scratch divisions, there's handicap divisions. And uh, the gentleman who runs the region for the TAT, I guess uh, now they're going into like regional areas and running regional tournaments. So Jamie McWilliams is branching out, doing a really good job on creating you know, a bigger tournament for people than just for two times a year. Um, so anyway, really a uh, great thing. What the, what this tournament is doing is the regional director is going around and talking to everybody and every team he's passing out flyers. Um, he was there last week and he talked about this $10 pot that he's going to get in or, or you're going to be able to get in next week. And, you know, I didn't really pay attention to anything after that. So they're doing the collecting. So of course they put the $10 out. Right. I'm like, yeah. I'm literally thinking this is going to be a winner spot. You know, ten dollars. Maybe they 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 give three or four winner spots, and then you're able to bowl a regional tournament for free, whatever. The last game, I couldn't strike the first two games. Um, 
I bowled like 205 and 215. Like I'm just completely, I left back to back pocket seven tens. I'm just back to my old like tricks here in this place. Last game, they break down. I shoot 279. I strike out in a 10 to essentially like put me in the number for this $10 pot that I'm in. Okay. I'm like, all right, cool. I, I got a winner spot. That, that's amazing. They're like, oh no, it's a tournament right now. I'm like, what do you mean right now is a tournament? Dude, Mike, it's 9.45 at night right now, right? Keep in mind. I, I would have been like DNF, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Dude, out. I wake up at literally 4.30 to 5 a.m. every morning. So, I, oh, And it's a half hour from me. Okay? The bowling center is. So I'm already like ready to leave. But my teammates are like, yo, Rob, like, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to run us back. You got to show them what's up. Like, you know, our, t- our name of our team is Bad Boys. They're like, yo, Bad Boys represent. Like, you got to, like, I'm like, man, I can't DNF, right? So I bowl the first game and I, I win. It's a, it's a match play. Now it's like literally 10 o'clock at night. But long story short, I bowl. How many people made it? It was like, it was like, Four in the scratch division, like six in like all the other divisions. There was like probably like 15 or 20 people. No, but I'm saying like, all right, so you were in the scratch? Yeah, I was in scratch. Okay, yeah. so you only had to bowl two matches max then. Two matches, but here's the funny part. is, I was, yeah, right, Jason, suck it up, right? I did. So I suck it up. I bowl the first match. I win. I bowl 250, right? The next match, it's already now about 11, 15, 1130 at night. I bullshitty, but 170, I lose. Okay, so I was happy to get out of there at midnight. Come to find out, if I would have won that match, I would have had to wait another match. I wouldn't have been bowling because you had to wait for the other divisions to bowl. And then the finals would have been like four or five on a pair. Mike, I wouldn't have got out of there until like 1.30 in the morning. I would have fucking lost my shit. Anyway. Jason Jason in the chat saying, suck it up, it's one night. You're right. I mean, Jason, I don't know, bro. Like on a on a Tuesday, though, Tuesday. when you're up at 4 30 in the morning, 5 in the morning. I mean, I'm up early in the morning too. On a Tuesday, if it's a Thursday, if it's a Thursday, no right. problem. Up, no right. sweat. I got yeah. you. Like, yeah. you want me to stay out until three o'clock in the morning on a Thursday? No sweat. Okay. But three two two o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, that yeah. Jason, we're older, bro. We're over 40. That's a different story, bro. I'm sorry. You know, you might be a young bull. Shout to you. If you're still doing it, go do it. But listen, I'm telling you, if I don't get like at least six hours of sleep between between Monday and Wednesday nights, I, I, I'm i a mess. I'm a so mess, son. For people in the chat are telling us to suck it up. When we were younger, when we were 15, 16, 17 years old. About 22, 23, 24. We would bowl. 28. We would bowl pots and brackets at Gil Hodgers Lanes in Brooklyn until 4 to 5 a.m. We would literally get up at 7 or 8 a.m., drive our asses to bowl JBT on Sunday, go stay at Sunday. No, on Saturday. Saturday on Saturday. Saturday, and then, right? And then, and then hang out all night, all day, the Saturday afternoon, night, night Saturday. And, and then Sunday. bowl Sunday again. And then drive yeah. home and you are completely spent. But And sometimes we used to – on the way back on Sunday, some of us anyway, we, we, we used to stop at Carolier and bowl at King of the Hill there on Sunday night. You know, so yeah, listen, there were uh, there were I, there was one summer where me and Paluzic were traveling around and bowling a few uh, a few leagues down in South Jersey. It was the same summer I missed the strike jackpot. I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, I was actually living in North Jersey. I was living like an hour and a half away almost and i used to drive down pick him up we'd go practice we'd bowl league we'd hit different bowling alleys bowl action until two in the morning i'd drive back over to philly drop him off and then i would drive like an hour and 20 25 minutes up to north jersey and i wouldn't get home until like 3 34 in the morning and i'd work the next day like I, i i would you know really think nothing of it so uh yeah you know i'm just i these days i can't do it like i i mean on the Tuesday night that I bowl, we get done at like 9.30. And then we've been sticking around and bowling one game of action afterwards most weeks. Uh, and that wraps up around like 10 o'clock, 10 after 10. So even then, I'm home by I'm home before 11. I'm in bed before 
And yeah, I'm, I, you know, I might set my alarm for maybe a half hour later than I usually get up, but, uh, yeah. So I, I understand, you know, anyway, so that was my, uh, all right, all right. Jason's Jason's clarifying in the chat here. He said he's our age and two to three M is too late. Uh, before Rob finished all, I'd be done by 11, 1130. Yeah, all right. Yeah. That's... Done, this thing was going to be done by like one. I mean, Jason, 11, 1130. I mean, come on, that's bro. I'm late. not, I'm not 70 years old, bro. We're not 70 years old. 11, 1130 is fine. You know, no problem. I was, I was at parks a couple Thursdays ago until 11 o'clock and I went to work the next day. So yeah, yeah no, no, 11, 1130 is, is not that bad, but like this thing was going to go to one, one thirty anyway. So yeah, that was my league night. It's just crazy how one night you're just thinking you go into a normal, regular league night and you end up bowling till midnight. Robert Hamilton, great point. After bowling, there would be Lenny's Clam Bar for late night dinner and Howard bowling Beach. You, you're right. Like, there always had to be some sort of food involved Ooh. afterwards most I mean, times. So, like, you would bowl until whatever time in the morning and then you had to go grab some food. Yo, uh, Wohop Chinatown was always a popular spot at 1 a.m. Uh, Rolling Roaster in Brooklyn. That's over by the same um, – that's over by uh, kind of Sheepshead Bay, right? Always open till two, three cheese on everything you please. Yo, bro, we used to bowl Brooklyn Action. I used to always hit up the good spots. But, man, my always favorite trip was Wohop in Chinatown and, and, and on Mop. Yeah, for us in Jersey, it was mostly the diner. Oh. You were mostly hitting the diner. You were hitting the Jersey yeah, the diner. Diners, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the local diners are always the great. No anyway. Doubt. Position round going on right now, Mike. You want to talk a little TOC? Um, well, what do you want to get into? You want to get into your tweet? You want yeah, to get into my tweet because I'm, okay. I'm so fired up. All right. Let's talk right now. Hope keep keep, time... keep an eye on bowl.com, yeah, though. And then, you know, let's uh, – let, I mean, I, can I be honest? They've done an excellent job with the coverage this week. Oh, it's, it's been great. phenomenal. It's been, great. It's been great. Uh, but, you know, hyping up the 17-man stepladder. I mean, come on. Like – we talked about this, you know, what's the, what's the realistic nature of somebody from the last show, even, the, even any show other than the final show winning this tournament, you know, I mean, I get it. It's, you know, it's a different concept and we got to try and create excitement around it. But, you know, I, I don't know. It just seems like it's going to, to me, it seems like it's going to be a lot of matches that don't mean much to lead up to a few matches that do. Um, you know, Waka had a good point on the commentary. It was really the only really point that I think is a good one when it comes to 17-man stop ladder. The one thing that it does do that's good is it gives uh, players exposure on TV that might normally not have it. Problem is, is most of the 17 guys that are going to make the show are probably consistent, regular, regular sh people that you see on the shows throughout the year. Um, so more exposure is good. Waka had that point. I agree with that. Uh, as everything else for the 17 step ladder, I think I've been on record calling it the dumbest thing the PBA has ever done. Um, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna go back on that comment, Mike. Um, <laughs> I still think they could have came up with a lot of different, uh, better ways to have three or four shows for a major other than having a 17 man step ladder. But Mike, if there's a really slim chance that a 17 or 16 or even a top anything below a top 10 seat makes a run and wins like six or seven or eight matches to win this tournament i will eat crow i was gonna say if someone from the from the first show wins this tournament i'll get a i'll, I'll get a tattoo of tom clark's face on my back okay that's how sure i am that no one from that first show is winning You'd have a better okay. chance of picking Princeton to beat Arizona in your first round of your NCAA. Play. Oh, 15 seed from Jersey. Come on, that's two years in a row, son. St. Peter's last year with the run. Where are they at this year? Yeah, they're out. Everybody transferred. They all transferred, wow. and they had a, they they had a terrible season. Yeah. What is Theo saying, Rob? CBE with three games qualifying top 20 players step ladder on Red Square. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Anything on Red Square, you know, that's my shit. But according to Tom Clark, I wouldn't average 180. On the on the tournament of champions pattern. All right. Well, let's so read your tweet. Do you have your tweet brought up? Because I have it brought up already. You want me to Go read ahead, it? Go ahead. All right. You you. Oh, geez. Now now I now I lost. Oh, I got it again. You said this was two days ago. You said every major should be as tough as the Masters or U.S. Open, in my opinion. Majors shouldn't be a strike fest. 
Okay, and this set off a lot of comments. All right, chief among them was from Barnes. Okay, Doctor Barnes chimed in. Yo, Justin, and, Justin wanted me to burn my Vax card. The two dollar <laughs> to to welcome to welcome uh, Aaron Rodgers to the Jets. Not a done deal yet. Uh, Doctor Barnes chimed in and he said the following. The takes on here are absurd. Now, he was responding to other things that were said oh, in this conversation, great. right? And, but I'm not, I'm not going to highlight all these, all these comments. So he, he said, uh, the takes on here are absurd. As someone who averaged 203, didn't quite match up to strike fest. So there he's referring to you, right? So he's kind of starting off by saying your take is absurd. They change viscosity every other week. Two point. Seven four to one. If the lanes are new, they are not. It plays like two to one ratio. Clue: If they are easy, no one lofts the gutter to create hold with angle. Okay, so I guess his point there is just the way that they're playing them uh, shows that they they it's that it's not a strike fest and they are not easy. Okay, so. You had that, right? You had that that little back and forth there. Then Tom Clark goes on Bowl TV today and says that your take was just shit. I mean, I, these are my words, not his. Okay, he basically spits in your face. Okay, basically. tells you tells you you stink. All right, says you wouldn't average more than one eighty. Okay, I have a DM. I have a DM from him that says you you wouldn't even beat two guys that finish near the bottom of the standings. Okay, so I know you want to respond to these things in a couple ways. I know that one thing you want to talk about is how you feel like your point was was somewhat mistaken. And I know that you want to talk about, you know, Tom Clark shitting all over you. So go ahead. So, Mike, when did I send that tweet out? That tweet was sent out after the first day of qualifying. Right. It could have even been like after the first five games of qualifying or four games of qualifying. Right. The top. Well, let me let me pull these numbers out because I don't want to I don't want to get any any facts wrong. Top twenty four players, Mike, out of sixty four players, twenty four averaged over two twenty. Okay, highest being EJ Tackett at two forty three, and then um. Read me read me the top ten. EJ Tackett two forty three. Uh, player that we won't mention uh, two forty. Yes, Svensson, 235, BJ Moore, 234 or 235, Kyle Troop, 234, Marshall Ken, 233, Oscu, 230, Don Bauer, 230, Andrew Anderson, 229, and Richie Tease, 228. So basically, top 10 or 230, or, well, okay, top eight are 230 or better. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Let, let, let me let me make one okay. argument here, and I, mm-hmm. I I have a point in relation to this argument too. What if some were to were to say, Rob, and you know this is the tournament of champions we're talking about. What if someone were to say this is an absolute elite field? It is an elite field. Okay, so should we that. shouldn't we expect then that the scoring pace is going to be higher because it's an elite field? Of course, yeah. Okay, so still too high for you though. Way too high. Okay, all right. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, I, I'll say this: like, I don't think that's a good point about the elite field because the, you know, let's be honest. This tournament of champions, it's been it's been somewhat manipulated, is the word I'll use over the years. Okay, we're not talking about the tournament of champions where it was the previous, you know, x x amount of champions where once someone knew one, someone was knocked off the list. Okay, uh, so. You have players in this tournament that qualified for the PTQ. Someone in our chat just just uh, just mentioned earlier uh, and brought this up and and put it was Mike Ruther and said should not have a PTQ for the TOC. Mike, I got to be honest with you, I agree. Rob, I don't know how you feel about it, but like this is the tournament of champions, and if you're going to argue that it's that it's an absolute elite field, then you, you have to you have to do your best to try and make it as elite as you possibly can. And over the years, that's not what has been done. You know, it went from being a true elite field of the most recent champions to allowing all all levels of champions in. Now we're at a point where we're having PTQs and people that are you know are not considered PBA champions are getting in. 
Um, so I, I don't I don't know if that elite. I mean, I know the best of the best are going to bowl this event, but you're also going to get some older players who come to bowl this event. You know, which is going to skew those numbers somewhat. Um, you know, if you're talking about the median average, et cetera, anyway. So I, I, I don't know uh, if that's a great argument about the absolute elite field. But l- let me ask you this then. You think that two, 240, 243, top eight, 230, scoring pace way too high. So where do you want to see it? Um, I would like to see it be closer to U.S. Open Masters type numbers, right? Um I think someone, if I think right around the high who leads a tournament like this should be right around the 220 area, 220, maybe to like 223 area, right? Leading, right? Cut number, I think you should be right around maybe um, high 20s, 2-teen, low, like somewhere around 205 to 210 probably should be a good like make top 24 match play i mean i gotta say that's <clears throat> that seems especially for the current environment scoring pace technology or you know at all uh I, ha- I have to say that that number seems very low to me you know I, I like i don't know how you control the scoring pace at that level like you'd really have to be creative when when's the last time we've even seen a major, let alone a, a tournament where the scoring pace was that low. Probably the U.S. Open, not this, not the last year or two. I'd say probably like prior two years. Prior ago. years from that. Yeah, I mean, I do I do remember a couple U.S. Opens where, where the scoring place was somewhat low, but then the complaint became that it was, it was you know, like the, the, the conditions were like a, uh, a slog fest, if you will. They they were, uh, you know, it, it's like bowling in a parking lot or something. Yeah, yeah, I think what I think the one thing that drives me crazy, and I think maybe it's just not a good point, but I feel like the PBA patterns, just the PBA patterns, are more favorable to the high rev rate, stand left, boom right type player. Um. I feel like the players, you know, maybe someone like uh, right now, if you look at the top like scores of top people, like maybe Sterner is one of the only guys who you could really consider that's a traditional, like pretty like straight type player. Um, I feel like guys like EJ and Kyle and, and um, you know, people who are really able to open the lane up, Matt Ogle, right? Like, have such an advantage it feels like these these days i don't know it just you know i mean look look like look, like look at the top five right now ej tackett 500 rev rate matt ogle huge rev rate left to right right anthony simonson for a two-hander he, he he's not a huge high rev rate guy but he's still a pretty decent rev rate right kyle troop two-hander andrew anderson left to right right really soft slows it off right belmonte two-hander sterner out of nowhere out of left field the straightest guy is is right now in seven right and then uh, jake peters would be the the other guy i feel like so I, right now i want to clarify something here because we're getting a couple comments you know you had mentioned some numbers before and jay in the chat is pointing out that the numbers you mentioned are close to actually how Things are going to end here, right? Well, like, the scores got lower as the tournament went on, right? And EJ not- averaged two twenty nine, cut was two sixteen. David Tolson pointing out number one C going to the position round two twenty five, seventeenth to two thirteen. I made that tweet after the first day of qualifying, right? And I think I have tweeted that right now because the lanes got harder as the the tournament went on. They talked about it in the commentary when Waka was on. They, the lanes got tighter or they they, they, get, they were really tricky and it didn't it, it, the scores did eventually go down in the tournament being from whatever that was I made that tweet after the first day of qualifying when the scores when it was a strike fest but I also feel like you like your opinion on the scoring pace I would imagine applies to like individual blocks too like like you want if it's a major you don't you don't want to see even for a block. 
No. Guys a averaging, you know, 240, 235, two, you know, 230 plus. You want to see that scoring pace through the entire tournament. I do. Yeah. What's a major? I feel like not only does it increase the prestige of winning a major, but it also like makes it like little like wow, like why is the US Open, in my opinion, the best major to win out of all of them? Because it's the because most it, demanding. It is, right? And I feel like if they could I mean, that's that, what I think anyway. 100%. And it, it, the, the format's demanding. It's the same type of format here, right, except for the 17-man the stepladder. Um, but it's the same type of format, right, 18 games or 24 games of qualifying, 24 games of match play, whatever it is, 18, whatever it was, right? Um, but if you put out a shot where they're, you know, really flat and they're really, like, you know, even with the ratio and it's just a grueling, brutal fest for – three days of match play or, or all days of match play, I feel like it increases the prestige of the tournament. And I know, so Tom Clark, let me get to Tom Clark now. Okay. I was going to, so how do you respond to you win average 180? Okay. First off, you give me a commissioner exemption next year for the TOC, put me into the PTQ. I'll, I'll run through the PTQ. You really want to go this route, Tom? Give me an exemption. Let me bowl the people, whatever. I, I'm an amateur. I'm not getting my pro card. You put me in there as the only amateur, and I bet you any amount of money that I average over 180 at the PTQ, and if I make the tournament, I'll average over 180. And when, shit, I'll give you 190, Tom. I'll give you 190. And then after you bring your shit, because I know you used to bowl, and then I will bowl you for any amount of money you want to bowl for, Tom. You bring your shit. <laughs> we got action, son. We got shit. action, boss. We stream that shit. We stream. I bowl once a week right now. I bowl three games a week. I bowl three games a week. I'm a league bowler. I'm a house bowler right now. I'm 220 average. That's it. You put me into the PTQ. I'll bet you on that, and then after I'll double or nothing. I'm bowling you best four to seven. Any pattern you want, Tom. Any pattern you pick it. Uh, I heard from Tom Clark today. We had a we had a little conversation, um, and I said to Tom Clark, uh, I believe that Rob, given the right set of circumstances, like a ball rep to work with, and the ability to drill some balls, could go plus. So I, I believe in you, Hoss. You know, I, I believe in you. I do. I think that you know you 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 know you have a very high level of talent. You know, I think it might take some take some help, but uh, but yeah, no, I agree. All right. So can I can I can I give my take on this now? Can I give my take on your take? Of course. Okay. So uh, I, I I disagree with your take. I do. Uh, I think that I think this is a more nuanced conversation. Right. And you know this. You I'm not saying that you don't know this. You you know, we're we're talking about something that you came up with like this and put out on Twitter, right? So this isn't something that you put a ton of thought into before you put it out there as a take, right? And let's let's be clear about that. But I, I do believe sure, Mike, I'll be honest with you. I <laughs> probably at like four thirty in the morning too. That's probably four thirty in the morning. Uh I, I I really do feel like this is a much more nuanced conversation about the scoring pace and and the the conditions and the lane conditions and the lane patterns and what's going on out there, you know, you 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 can sum it up by saying you know the scores are high, okay? Because a lot of times the scores are high. I'm not going to deny that. Now I know that the scoring pace has come down this week, but uh, generally speaking, there's always a group of people whacking whacking them. I mean whacking them two two forty or better. OK, and this this has sort of become the norm. Right uh, now, why that is, I don't I don't know. I don't have the explanation for these things. Right. I'm not an expert on lane conditions or balls or any anything of this nature, but I'm just speaking from a fan's perspective here. OK, and while I understand that there's different patterns and variety of what they put out on the lanes, what I see as a fan is that they are often playing the same way and and it seems catering to the same styles in many instances. Right. Okay. 
point was like like to me, I don't whether it's pattern A or pattern X, there doesn't really seem to be a ton of difference, particularly as the as the games go on, uh, in how they're played and how how bowlers are played. To me, it mostly seems like you're a thing straight through the front part of the lane for the first two, three games. Huge step left, switch to something reactive, start swinging the lane to that point, that spot where the ball's hooking down the lane, and continue to move left and do that and switch balls as needed going on for the rest of the block. Right now, I understand that there's probably more to it than that. I understand that guys are probably throwing balls with different layouts, throwing different balls, changing hand positions, changing speed within all of what I'm saying. But again, I'm just I'm just speaking from the fans' perspective, you know. And from the fans' perspective, I feel like I want to see more variety. I want to see more variety in in how the lanes are played earlier and later in the blocks. I want to see more variety in the styles of play that have success. Okay, uh, you know. For instance, some somebody hit my DMs earlier this week, and I thought it was a great point. I think it was Anthony Battaglia, one of our guys who usually joins us here, and he said he he said left one handed lefty bowling is dead on the PBA tour. Okay, and I had to think about that for a minute, and I was like, yo, you know what? Like, I think he might be right. Okay, and that that's terrible. That's terrible. I mean, one of the greatest of all time, Earl Anthony might not even be able to s- compete in this environment, this current environment that we're in. And what is that saying? So so when I say I want to see different styles of play having success, that that's kind of what I mean there. Not just lefties, but, you know, guys who don't step left and bang on it and, and throw with a ton of rev rate. In it. So it's the only single-handed left hand, only single left-handed bowler that is, is competitive right now, and I could be wrong here, but Buttrip, but Buttrip is like double jointed in his wrist. So double, he essentially throws the ball like a, he palms it in, in in a weird way, right? Um, I don't know what other one handed lefty is it really competitive right now out there other than Buttrip. None. Yeah, I can't think of one. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like his his point is is an is, is an amazing point. Yeah. It's not really something that I had thought about previously. Yeah. But it's an amazing point. I mean, it really got me thinking at several points. Like, wow, he he he's he's right. Like that that's that's a that's a very very fair point. And again, Henry, when was the last time Graham Fa made a show or actually like won a title? I mean, I know he won like a a, a big local event. Yeah, but right? a national tournament. So Larry earlier in the chat asked, "What kind of pattern would you put out to keep scores as low as you want?" See, I don't know, I, Larry. I'm not. I'm not an expert in in lane conditions and lane patterns. Right. Uh, again, just speaking from a fan's perspective, I would like. I would like to to see the results. I don't. I'm not so sure how to build what to get there. How to get there, but I would like to see some more variety. Robert Hamilton mentioning Greg Tack. You know, a collab with a PBA pattern, guarantee the scores won't be high. I mean, I would like to see stuff like that, Robert. I would like to see the PBA go out and recruit. Pe- knowledgeable people who have experience with building lane patterns to to go out and say, listen, put together something that you think is going to challenge guys or put together something that is going to encourage this this style or this um, – maybe I don't want to say style – this uh, this this type of play on the lane, okay? So you – know, you know, Look, I'm, I'm seeing people in the comment here, but like – Fah made the final five at the players last year. That's Shep. Is that what you're digging out right now? You're going back to last year's TOC to talk about a player who made it. Like, you know, that shouldn't be the case. We should be talking about him this year. And I mean, that. well, basically what that amounts to, Shep, is that he won a regional. I mean, that's kind of what that amounts to. No, like, because to make the final, you really only had to win one of your one of your regionals. Would you say though that the USPC does a pretty fair job with their patterns on their tournaments? Masters, US Open. I mean, I think the scoring pace at the Masters is pretty high sometimes. The last few years it hasn't been. You know, so it's been I, really I, tricky the last US few years. US Open, obviously not. 
Uh, but I don't know about the Masters. So they're just finishing up the position round, by the way. Um, so I'll wait for the final scores to come in and then we can update as we're on here. So we should get that in like 20 minutes in case anybody's watching us and not watching full TV right now. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some swings here at the last uh, round. But yeah, man, look, my um, look, my point was just off off like it got it got taken in wrong because like i know well you did out. use the term strike fest to be it fair was, it was a strike fest the for first for a round for a qualifying round it was and that's when okay. i tweeted that so i didn't think people could go oh but the scores went down and i got and i wouldn't i wouldn't have not tweeted that watching these last like you know two or three rounds of match play like right now they're not easy right they're it's not a strike fest um, the scores kind of went to probably pretty good of where I, I'm, I'm okay with the way they are now. They're very tricky. There's a lot of people struggling. I think Stu Williams went like 160s first three games, right? Um, I mean, you know, guys are throwing gutters and stuff out there. So, and these guys are the best. I mean, you know how good these guys are. So when I see these guys throwing gutters and, you know, picking three off the right and uh, i mean for me it's hard to believe that they're easy you know and and i definitely i I, you know i wouldn't describe it as a strike fest but i understand your point if you're just looking at one block in a major and seeing guys averaging 240 top 10s 230 you know i understand your point about wanting to see uh a slower um a, a slower uh scoring pace overall in in some of these major events but again to me you know a little bit of a more of a more nuanced conversation and and i'm not i'm not saying that you don't understand that. i know you understand that but and and barnes on bull tv said that that was disrespectful and barnes is a very polite guy barnes didn't use my name he didn't call me out but he did talk about how someone on twitter called it a strike fest and that was very disrespectful to all the pros that are bowling look you all know me, Mike. I'm not disrespectful to these guys. I respect what they do in their craft as more than anybody, right? I bowled with these guys. I, you know, I bowled these tournaments, World Series of Bowling, years, Masters, college. I mean, I bowled. We with- put we put many years into trying to get to the level that they're at, right? I respect the hell out of what these guys do, right? But sometimes people take what I say. I, uh, and they take it as more of like I'm saying it as a competitive bowler when sometimes they understand right now that I'm just a fan. I'm not a I'm not a competitive bowler. I'm a fan. Uh, Henry in the chat say, <laughs> saying gutters. You guys should be happy. I'll be honest, Henry. I love it when I see professional bowlers struggling. I love it when I see guys throw gutters because you want to know why, Henry? Because I bowl on tough conditions too, and I go out and throw gutters sometimes. You know, so when I see somebody. Uh, like a Chris Prather, you know, playing playing twenty, and he dumps it in the moat because he misses it, and it just sails right. Yeah, I love that. That's that's the kind of viewing experience that I'm there for. I think he's coming at us here, though, Rob. He's saying sweep the rack, aka carrot, carrot and Ken. Who's who's hey, carrot and who's Ken? I don't know. Hey Henry, get get on the list for people hating on us. Okay, hit get to the back of the line. All right, go do what you got to do. Don't. You, trust me, you're not the first person, you're not the last person that's going to try to come at us, okay? Uh, Nico making a fair point here. You know, maybe you should have waited until another day was finished before you judge the scoring. But everyone's coming. Everyone's getting at Rob's ass today. I love it. Every, give, a, give it to him, people. What, so I'm not going to tweet him. when I want to tweet? No, because he gets so much enjoyment when I tweet something and I catch heat for it. So this is an instance where I get to sit back and enjoy him catching heat. When okay. I saw that, when I saw that Chris Barnes tweet this morning, I was like, "Oh man, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to hide somewhere." Hey, I don't worry to, though; they're uh, about to, they're about to uh, call out the seventeen man step ladder, so that should be another forty five minutes on Bull TV. Yeah, absolutely. And wait the picture; it's going to look like my elementary school picture when they put the seventeen in the one picture. They're literally going to have like three lines. They're going to have four pros that have to sit down so that the camera can get everybody. Hey, get closer, get closer, get closer. We got to take the picture. People commenting in the chat that uh, Wes Malott made the show. Uh, that's great. It's great to hear. Yeah, it's great to hear. You know, I know. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been struggling, you know, uh, 
you know, yeah, health wise, for a while, he's injury been- wise. Yeah, nice to see him make a show. He's you a know, guy. no, it is. It's uh, it's good. It's good stuff. Ooh, some surprise Grund- Grundler, I think, made fifteen. That's okay, a, that's, that's a new name that we're, we're, we'll get to see. Uh, right. Listen, I have. I, let, let's talk. Let's talk bets, Rob. Okay. Let's talk bets because because okay. there's there's gambling on this. Uh, Bet Rivers, okay, offering odds on bowling. Uh, Rob lives in Arizona, where where he can he can get access to this, so he puts some bets into us. Dougie in the chat throwing gutters. I know you throw gutters, son. I think we we bowled a team event together where I think you threw a few gutters. So I know that's right. What's good though? Too much. Uh, to hope all is well. No, no, not enough. Oh, not enough. Actually, <laughs> it was too bad. early in the morning, uh, and the bar wasn't open. Uh, and I think that's what had him bowling bad. I'm not. I'm not going to put words in my man's mouth, but uh, I think that. Uh, I think that. <laughs> uh, Dougie. Uh, all right, so let's let's talk about uh, bets here, okay? Because we do have some bets. As I said, Bet Rivers, if you're in a state, you can't get it in every state that it's available. Like, you might be able to get Bet Rivers, but not Bet on Bowling. That's where I'm at. I'm in New Jersey. I can download Bet Rivers. I can access it, but I can't bet on bowling because of state laws. Rob is in Arizona where he can bet on bowling on Bet Rivers. So we do have some bets here uh, this week, Rob. I'm going to go through mine first. Uh, I got the top two guys. Uh, I got money on them. I got 20 on Simo uh, to win 140, and I got 20 on Tackett to win 140. Okay? But, you know, I mean, I know. I see you smirking at me, Rob. For those listening, Rob has a smirk on his face like, oh, Mike thinks he's a bowling betting genius because he took Simo and, and EJ Tackett. No, not at all. Not at all. Smart. Really? Smart. Martin. Yes, yes. Really, what those bets were is they were my backup bets of like, let me get all my money back if things go the way I think it's going to go. But if it doesn't go the way everyone thinks it's going to go, let me take some shots. Wait, okay. By the way, they're still calling names out for the seventeen man step ladder. FY. Oh, what time is it? What time is it? It's eight forty seven. They'll be calling names until nine thirty. <laughs> They'll be introducing guys until nine thirty. All shaking hands. This thing is like they should. Someone wrote in the chat. They should all go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, I had ten dollars on Bill O'Neill. No good. Didn't work out there. Come I on, have. Come I on, have, Bill. I, I know. I have ten dollars on Belmo, who I believe is still in the hunt. Okay. Yeah, he's he's on the show. I don't know what place he is though. That's to win a hundred. Uh, I had fifteen dollars on Dom Barrett. I don't believe he's in it, right? Uh, I'm shocked by that. I got to yeah. be honest. I'm, I, that might be the biggest shock of the week uh, to me yeah. that that he did not make it. I'm not riding with him. And then yeah, and then I have uh, yes for Svensson for ten, who I believe is still in it. Uh, that's to win 180. This is the one I'd really like to hit, though. This is the guy. This is the guy I'm going to be cheering for in these early step ladder matches. Let's go, Hoss. One time. Give me Tom Smallwood, because I got five hours on Tom Smallwood to win seven fifty five. <laughs> seven fifty five hours to win eight eight hundred. Seven fifty five. Let's go, Smallwood. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna be rooting hard for Smallwood. Uh, then okay. I then I got Prather uh, for ten to win two sixty. So you know, I got Prather. I got Smallwood. I got EJ. I got Simo. I got Belmo. You know, I picked five. I, I picked eight total. Five of them are, in, are, you know, made the top 17. And I got the top two, and I got other a couple other guys who probably have a legitimate shot. So, you know, I, I feel I feel good going into these shows. I feel like I'm going to win a bowling bet here. Yeah, well, I think you're going to get one. I think you're going to get one. Simon Tackett, I think between the two of them, you're going to get one. Um, isn't, isn't that ridiculous that – it's going to be a 17 man step ladder. It's probably going to be Simo or Tackett that wins. Yeah. Now, mean. for your for your case, if Smallwood can make a run and get to the third spot and then bowl Simo, now you're just playing with house money. Now you're getting. Oh, my goodness. But I would, I mean, listen, much I, love to Simo and Tackett. Much respect to those guys. But if Smallwood finds a way to get into the final three, I'm going to be off my rocker. Rooting for Smallwood. I mean, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the best of my black clouding abilities to to push Smallwood through to the final. 
I'm, I'm going to look now if you have the ability to cash out on Smallwood. Mm. Maybe that you might want to think about that if you can get something good um, to cash out on them. Um, but I, I don't think you can do that. But uh, I, I honestly, you, you you sent it in on the bets. I only uh, had two bets. I only made two bets. I made a ten dollar bet on Belmonte to win a hundred. To win, a, it was more than that. It was uh, I think to win one twenty. I think it was okay. plus one hundred. And I put a five dollar bet on uh, on Kyle Troop. Okay. Yeah, so, you got a good shot there. I got a little action, uh, Kyle. What's I, that? What's that to win? Um, I think it was like five to win, like seventy or eighty or something in that nature. Okay. Um, I didn't want to put a whole lot in, but uh, you know, I I, I didn't want to go the Simo Tackett route. And I'll be honest with you, like, I kind of felt like I didn't feel like Tackett was going to do what he did this week. I thought I I just kind of felt like eventually he's going to have to like. You know, fall off a little bit. Um, you know, not, I mean, well, I he well he has he he has in a couple events this year, but they've kind of been meaningless to a degree. I want to say. Oh, wait, they're taking the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, this is seventeen funny. guys in the picture. Yeah, are they okay. stand? Did they put each other on each other's shoulders? No, are they all? What are they doing? They literally made him into a single row line and he's just going down the line with like a video. It's like, okay, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, gotcha. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, so you know, Kyle, look, I'm gonna be pulling for Kyle. Uh, I don't, I, I didn't get a, I'm, I'm waiting on the actual like final of when they're stand of when they're actually, uh, where they're placed on the step ladder. I'm not there yet. So, okay. Anyway, so yeah, so. I mean, I'm gonna watch the shows, regardless. Like, I might. I'm, pro- I'm probably gonna have to. Uh, the, the Friday show is 10 p.m., so I'm good on that one. Uh, I'll, I'll, pro- I'll likely stay up and try and watch that. The Saturday shows, I'm probably gonna have to tape at least one of them because I have some plans Saturday night. Uh, but yeah, I'll catch up on those when I get home. I would imagine. And then Sunday, obviously, I'll be watching live. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm 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 interested to, to watch and watch all the bowling action, but you know, I do have to say that to me, as a, as an informed fan, it's somewhat anticlimactic to be watching these 17 versus 16 and so on and so forth. You know, until we really get to the to the to the meat of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, I honestly don't know how much I'm going to be able to watch on Saturday and Sunday. I'll be honest with you, uh, I have plans. Both Saturday evening and Sunday evening, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to get a chance to watch. Well, su- Sunday's afternoon. Oh, really? Like, yeah, Sunday's yeah. after tw- twelve noon Eastern. So that would be nine a.m. my time Sunday. Yeah, we. I'll probably end up having a DVR of that too. Okay. <laughs> this weekend is a jam packed weekend for me. But anyway, so yeah, so um, I wait to see if Bet Rivers comes out with new odds to see about the 17 man step ladder. I, I'd be curious to see what the odds are like of Packy, I believe, who's 17 to like run the ladder. I, I can't imagine them actually putting odds on that because that's well, like, what a, if they give odds, put a dollar on it for me, will you? Yeah, I mean, a dollar to win three million dollars. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah, like, um, honestly, we're already getting asked about what, who, who we think, you know, who's a dark horse, honestly, like. I got to see who the top 17 is. I mean, I know like most of them from just watching here, um, you know, know like who's in what, but realistically, Mike, in my opinion is if you're below a certain number on the ladder, you don't have a, a really, it's a, just a bad, it's a bad shot. You, you don't have a little, it's a, it's a minimum. All right, shot. what's that number? Because Belmo's in sixth, Sterner's in seventh, Stuart Williams in eighth. Jake so, Peters in ninth, and that would be Belmo would need to win then what six matches to, to win in a row? One, two, three, four, I think five. Five matches. Belmo yeah, it might be six, yeah. Five or six. Five or six. The one thing that you do have going for you is that it, it's two different shows. So it's not essentially you're winning six in a row. You win two and then you take the night off and then you come back, right? And then it becomes like a new show, and then you could run the ladder. Matt Ogle took over the two two spot from Simo. 
I'm not too happy about that. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure Belmo. If you're asking me right now, Belmo has got to be like a plus, like at least a plus 2000, right. To win, to win five or six matches. Is Packy the only lefty? He I is. Thought, is he, he is. Uh, my boy, Frank, making a good point here, you know. If he's the only lefty, you know, Purple Hammer, you know, the whole time, re-oil after each show, I don't know. You know, I, I, it would still be astronomical odds. The odds to – how many matches is that to win? Undefeated on, I think it's 16 matches. Has anybody ever – Ever won sixteen and zero in matches. It's sixteen matches. Sixteen matches. That's an interesting question. In a round, okay, let's just use it a round robin format. Has anybody ever won sixteen and zero on round robin, like to start their top first sixteen matches? I'm not sure. I mean, Prather would have to win thirteen matches. That's crazy. It's ridiculous. He's not. Nobody's. It's it's practically impossible. What about Stu Williams in eighth? I mean, he was in the top three all week. He yeah. was in and had a great look. I mean, I, I you know, I don't know. Like, Mike, is it possible that no. if he gets locked in, you know, has no. a good look for a couple shows in a row? No, this is Simo and Tackett's tournament. Well, that see, that's that's the real problem. You're right. That that's a that's a great point. Like, even if you make a run up the whole ladder from wherever you're at, and now you got you're one of the final four. Okay, and you're you're stepping up to bowl the three seed, and what do you got to do? You got to go through Simo, and if you beat him, you got to go through Matt Ogle, and if you beat Matt Ogle, you got to go through EJ Tackett. All right, so I mean, no, yeah, it's it's serial killer row over here, bro. It's, Tack it's Tackett's tournament, Mike. It, All right, well, good. we'll see, we'll see by Sunday. All yeah. right, Rob, let's give the people what they want. Yes, sir. Seventeen man worst of the week step ladder. <laughs> The on the uh, worst of the week rosin bag that we sent to Tom Clark, courtesy of Tim Sorrell, uh, we should you should write seventeen man step ladder on the back of it. Yes, yeah, sign Rob Strike clear. Fest. Rob Strike Fest Parashad. True. No, Rob 180. 182. 180. Mister one eighty two. That's gonna be my new name. Oh my god, Nico chime Nico chiming in early, chiming in early, coming in hot, son. I love it. I love it. His worst of the week is the Norm Duke trophy. The PBA made it. It doesn't even look like him. It is a horrible trophy. And Tom Clark actually referred to it in short as the Duke as the Dukey. He called it the Dukey, son. He said people are going to come out to bowl this LCB and and they're going to want to win Dukies. Does he not understand that Dukey means a huge poop? Does he, does he not understand this, son? What is going through your head? Dookie? Come on. That's a Green Day album, okay? That's a Green Day album. That is Before not, that is not what we should be nicknaming a trophy named after one of the greats of the game. Maybe, maybe the greatest ever to do it, perhaps, some people might say. And we're going to call his trophy the Dookie as if, it's, as if it's a pile of poop, a pile of excrement. <laughs> a, 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 a molding of feces? Are you are you serious, bro? Come Pete on, nothing a dookie. <laughs> yo, yo, what if Pete Weber holds it up and it, it drops? It would be Pete dookie. Weber dropping a dookie. A big fat. Oh dookie my goodness, uh, Nico, you get best of the week for that, bro. You, win, you get bro. best of the week for that because oh, that man. that was that was that was on the money, son. That was on the money. You're right about that. You are 100. Right. And that trophy does look like crap. It does. It doesn't. You can't even tell who it's supposed to be. So it looks like a dookie. It, it kind of does. Kind of okay. does. Looks like okay. it was made out of dookie. Okay. Um. So I'll go with my worst of the week. Even though I love to give my worst of the week to Tom Clark, because um, you know he ain't bowling me. You know he don't. He don't want this smoke. You know he ain't inviting me to the. To a uh, to an entry to the a PTQ for next uh, next TOC, Tom Clark, you should get worst of the week, but you don't because thankfully, Anthony Campisi from the DV8 Bowling Fans page wins the worst of the week this week, and this is a 
DV8 has bowling fans? I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, I didn't say I'm it. Sorry, you did. I didn't say that. Um, I'm sorry. This is a straight Big Mike worst of the week. This is a, a worst of the week tailored for Big Mike to set him up. I'm literally throwing an 80-mile-an-hour fastball down the middle of the plate for Big Mike right now. He's, <laughs> he's ready over here. 740 tonight with the brutal collision. Just tearing it up with this ball. Hashtag DV8 bowling. Hashtag DV8. Hashtag whatever by by the way hashtag free agent wink wink nudge nudge oh my god smiley face with a picture of his three game series oh my goodness uh oh, the, the 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 shameless self promotion <laughs> by the way wink wink nudge nudge at bolt 740 someone give me a contract um but uh, dude, Robert Hamilton, he does he's doing it all for the Dookie, all for the Dookie. You give it the Dookie. <laughs> yeah. I did it all for the Dookie, the Dookie. <sighs> oh my goodness, that is too much. All right, Mike, what do you got? All right, I, I have a worst of the week that was emailed to us by Dallas Burke. So shot to Dallas Burke for emailing us this worst of the week. Oh, I hope we didn't get him in trouble. And it's actually it's actually somebody writing in to Dear Abby about bowling. Do you oh, all know I saw this. <laughs> do, do you all know what Dear Abby is? Dear Abby is like one of those advice columns that people write into like when they have problems with their husband or something of this nature. Okay. Uh, so the dear Abby title says these hot shots have spoiled our small town bowling league. If we all drop, th this is the title, right? This is the title. These hot shots have spoiled our small town bowling league. If we all drop out, do you think the alley's owner will get the picture? Okay, that's the title. All right. <laughs> Terry, Terry Runyon in the chat saying this is going to be good. Oh, Terry, you know I bring my A game for worst of the week, bro. <laughs> Dear Abby, you ready? Dear Abby, this is the letter. I live in a small town with a population of about 10,000. There is almost nothing to do here. By the way, we I need to know where this is from. Okay, when I'm done reading this, I need to sweep the rack people on this. I need to know what bowling alley this is. I need to know who the owner is. I need to, I need information on this, okay? I live in a small town with a population of about 10,000. There is almost nothing to do here. There is a skating rink, a movie theater, and a bowling alley. Since bowling in a league is a weekly thing, I joined one. Our bowling center has been bought by a former professional bowler. <laughs> She has formed a team consisting of herself, her fiancé, her son, and a friend. They are all top-notch bowlers. Her son scores in the high 200s every game he bowls. Since they own the place, they get unlimited practice. The lady pro has taught them everything she knows. The rest of us don't stand a chance of winning a game against them. Should I just not care and think of it as a night out and accept that when we bowl against the big guns, as they had been referred to, we can count on losing? It's true that it's not about winning. It's about having fun. But it's disheartening that we already know the outcome before the night begins. <laughs> there are other leagues to bowl in. Maybe I should join one of those. If we all drop out one by one, I'm sure they will figure out what's going on. Any advice? Oh, here's here's dear Abby's response. Here's dear Abby's response. Dear Bowler, talk to the new owner of the bowling alley and tell her how you and the other players feel. This is her livelihood, and she needs to know that it may be time to start a new league of less practiced bowlers like yourself. If she's a good businesswoman, she will be open to it. If she isn't, you and the others should take your business elsewhere. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine writing in to Dear Abby because because somebody's kicking your ass in your bowling league every week? 
Oh my God. Mike. That was too good. That was a great laugh. I hope you all enjoyed that. Who Tom is this? Clark. Can- Tom Clark with the Justin worst of the week. Ah, uh, yeah, I saw this. I saw this on social media earlier this week. No, this is, this is the 17 man bracket. So he wrote this and then he just put in the names. I guess, yeah. I think he I, I mean, I don't know. I think he was referring to like this is how he created this idea was he wrote it down on like a napkin or something or a random envelope and that's how he created this idea. So why, why 17 people? Why know. is the number 17? Well, well because a certain amount of time. Oh, for the TV shows. I don't know. I just thought would have wanted to bring this up. Cuz he writes move over March madness. <laughs> the PBA brackets. <sighs> Oh, Lord. Anyway, dear Abby, why did the PBA come out with a 17-man stepladder? The dumbest format in the history of the PBA. I mean, honestly, I feel like that one's – that 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 worst of the week is up there with the one from Reddit where, where the guy talked about the, the pain and suffering and misery of sports shots. Oh my God! I my, love first of the week. I'm telling. I wonder you. if everyone gets a table at the bowling center that they're at. Right. Yeah, I'd bowl there if I was getting a, a table. Uh, yep. Yep. But yeah, all right, Rob. Let's wrap it up. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> Final thoughts, Rob. Yeah, I, I, I don't want all of our uh, – what we talk about on the show a lot about, you know, we give the PBA a lot of shit we do. Uh, we talk about, you know, how this 17-man stepladder is kind of dumb. Uh, you know, we, we do give a hard time to a lot of the people, but ultimately PBA bowling is back on television. Uh, we are able to bet on that, which was our, our wish for years – as, as long as we've done this show, we've talked about it. So regardless of how cri- critical we are of the 17-man step ladder, uh, and I'm sure Bet Rivers will have ways to bet on this action, um, bowling is on TV. It is live, and we will probably be able to bet on a lot of these matches in the step ladder. So overall, it's been a great week for bowling. Bowl TV has done an, an absolute fantastic job with the coverage the interviews uh, after the matches. Um, and, you know, you could just tell the improvements. Now, I know they're having some technical difficulties with the app and they had some streaming difficulties last week. A lot of that's out of their control, which we talked to Mike Flanagan about, um, that they, you know, have a lot of hurdles on a weekly basis. Overall, though, you really, you know, can't be really mad and angry with the product right now that's being put out for the fans with the bowling on TV, the betting. Um, obviously, I always want to be more entertained and I want to see more, you know, uh, personalities and I want to see that nature, which, you know, you could read my article on Jeff Riggle's 11 frame. But ultimately, I'm happy with what the PBA is doing. And, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be super, like, always, like, you know, critical and, and, and mad. Uh, to that end, uh, Norm Duke was in the booth this week on Bowl TV. The Duke, the Dukey, the Dukey was in the booth, and uh, they they brought up the idea of betting on bowling with him, mm-hmm. and he was very clear that absolutely we need betting in bowling, and and he was me- echoing a point that I had made on this show, almost word for word, in saying that bowling is made for betting. It's a sport that has its roots in betting, okay? And and we need to go back to those roots to build a following that's interested in the sport for a reason outside of playing the sport, right? Think about people that bet on sports. They don't play the sports they bet on. They watch the sport. They don't watch the sports because they play them. They watch, they watch the sports because they're betting on them, okay? They care about the sports because they're betting on them, so... Yeah, I thought it was really interesting to hear that, and and I agree wholeheartedly. And uh, you know, I encourage the powers that be to to try and get this expanded, you know, and try and try and make it a real thing. Hopefully, by Sunday, Rob will be able to bet on 
regular on uh, on Fox Bet as well. I would think you know usually like for the majors you can bet on Fox Bet at least on uh, on on who to win. Nico's saying they're already posting odds and uh, Belmo's plus thirty three hundred. I'll look right now. Wow, yeah, me, plus thirty three hundred. Give me a look right on air right now. Give me give me ten on that right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, FYI, um, you could um right now you can cash out. Hold on, I, I'm wondering if you can cash out on Smallwood. You can cash out Simo at twenty five dollars. Okay. Uh, you can cash out Tackett at forty eight dollars. Okay. You can cash out Belmo at three dollars and fifty cents. Let me see if Smallwood's here. You can cash out on Smallwood because to me that would be the one I'd be more interested in. Um, I can cash out Kyle Troop at three dollars. Okay. Uh, but there, no, you can't cash out Smallwood right now. I don't want to cash out Smallwood anyway. I'm just saying though, if you got like a couple hundred bucks, you might think about it, right? Like uh, maybe. Um, Belmo plus thirty three hundred looks good though. All right, my final thought is. Uh, is is uh based on something that I heard while I was checking out Bowl TV's coverage this week. Uh and that is that uh that Dave Wacker was in the booth at points this week. Yeah. And uh he was talking about his his uh recent battle with cancer. You know, and you always hate to hear that, you know, uh for somebody in the bowling community. Uh -huh. I don't even know Waka at all. Ne never never met him outside of probably getting his autograph at a Johnny Petraglia open. But uh you know, hate to hear that. Just wanna, just wanna wish him well. You know, wish him well with his, uh, with his journey and that. You know, he was kind of giving, uh, giving a detailed update with Mike Flanagan on the, on the broadcast. So, um, that's it. Just wanted to wish the guy well. Say, uh, say shout to him and, yeah, and uh, you know, good, good luck fighting through that. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I know Dave, uh, pretty decent from, just, uh, you know, from bowling and whatnot. Great guy. Uh. I, I've been down that road before. I've talked about, you know, the C word, uh, and I've been down that road, and it's uh, not a fun road. It's scary. It's uh, a lot of, you know, not only takes physical toll out of you, but it takes a mental toll out of you. Um, and, you know, you're never the same after that. You're really not, regardless of, uh, you know, you just, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's a, a brutal situation. So um, my well wishes and, you know, all my thoughts go with Waka and glad to see him up and about and bowling and commentating and you know we'll see him bowling on PBA 50 he said he's going to be bowling five events um so yeah you know that would be amazing to see him start winning uh because he's a, an amazing bowler uh I mean the guy strikes for a year so uh yeah you know shouts to uh Dave and uh good to see him back and uh yeah we and we wish him the best hi folks shows Friday two shows Saturday Final show Sunday. Rob, we will be on Sunday night to wrap up the Tournament of Champions, give our rundown, do things the way we do it around here at Sweep the Rack. Uh, we appreciate everybody joining us. We appreciate everybody catching up with us after, if you're listening to this after the fact. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy these shows. And uh, we'll catch everybody on Sunday to break things down. All right, Rob, take it easy. Everybody on Sunday. Good night, except Tom Clark. You are now listening to Sweep the Rack Podcast featuring Brooklyn Rob and Big Mike.